in a shocking turn of events, I actually agree with most of the new AP poll. But there are still some key differences, which is why we are here to bring you our Week 9 GE Top 25 poll. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're so glad that you could join us today. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos, and of course, check out everything down in the description below. That includes our expert picks, home of some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country, picks that are being out over 80% of the national handicappers, not just right now, but have done so each of the last six years. And we're offering you those picks for one low time fee for a full year long subscription. Some handicappers want you to buy for a day, some for a week, some for a month. We're offering it to you for a full year for one price only. All those prices cheaper than anybody else out there. So go sign up today. The link for that down in the description below over on thegridironexpert.com and start winning big with us today. So week nine was obviously a or excuse me, week eight, I should say, was a not lackluster weekend. We saw some very exciting games, some very important games, but it was not as wild as you know week seven, week six, week five. Only three top 25 teams went down, all three of those coming in ranked versus ranked matchups. So there weren't too many major shakeups in the AP poll, and there certainly weren't many major shakeups in our GE top 25 poll. But let's go ahead and break it down right now, starting in our top 10 where we do have a new number one team in the country, and that is the Oregon Ducks. That should be assumed, right? Oregon was number two for us last week. The number one team in the country in Texas went down to Georgia, lost to Georgia, and Oregon obviously going to replace them at number one. The Ducks undefeated, have a great win on their resume over Ohio State, and did not have a letdown game in West Lafayette against Purdue, shutting out the Boilermakers 35 to nothing. So Oregon, the new number one team for us, also the new number one from the AP poll. We do have Georgia all the way up at number two. You know, uh, the Bulldogs hadn't looked great over the last few weeks. They lose to Alabama, didn't look great against Mississippi State. It was like, ah, what's up with the Bulldogs here? They looked great against Texas. Yeah, a handful of mistakes here and there, but held that offense in Austin to 15 points, winning by 15 points, 30 to 15 on the road against the number one team of the country. They absolutely deserve to shoot up back to number two. Penn State and Ohio State neither played this last weekend. Both had a bye week, so Penn State staying at number three for us. Ohio State staying at number four, both getting jumped by Georgia, who obviously now has one of the best wins in the entire country on their resume. Miami up to number five for us. Finally cracking the top five is the U, beating Louisville 52-45 to in what was one of the best games of week eight. Back and forth, we saw passing touchdowns, rushing touchdowns, special teams, defensive touchdowns, everything you wanted and more. Epic, epic game in Louisville on Saturday morning. Miami coming out on top, 7-0 for the first time since 2017. The Canes are not just, right now, the best team in the ACC, but they are a legitimate college football playoff contender, and obviously no doubt about that. Texas, for us, dropping five spots. Some should say they should have dropped less, you know, three spots, four spots. I'm dropping them five. I was very unimpressed with Texas. You can't have that type of a game at your own house, that big of a magnitude of a game, and lay an egg like that. To come out 23 to nothing, get down 23 to nothing at halftime. Battle back, still lose 30 to 15. It was a very poor performance from Texas. Obviously, they're not a bad team. They are still a national title contender. They still have elite talent, no doubt about that. But they're going to drop five spots. They've got a loss on their record now. Miami does not. Uh, Ohio State only has one by one point on the road. Uh, obviously, you want to start comparing resumes, you can do that. But Texas, for us, going to drop five spots down to number six. Clemson is up to number seven. They remain at number seven. We had them there last week. They stay there now after beating Virginia 48-31. to In a game that was, you know, Clemson had full advantage of. They were, they were up by, what, 28 points at one point, something like that, uh, and allowed, you know, allowed Virginia not to come back but to make it closer than the game really was. I think these two teams traded like four touchdowns in like the final four minutes when the game was out of reach. But the Tigers are playing fantastic football. Ever since their loss to Georgia in week one, they have blown out every single opponent since then. And they are absolutely college football playoff contenders. And it really feels like Clemson and Miami are on a collision course in the ACC championship game. LSU moving up a spot to number eight following their 24-point win on the road at Arkansas, annihilating the Razorbacks from start to finish. That game was never close and was never in doubt. Iowa State up a spot following their comeback win over UCF, 38-35, winning the game in the final 30 seconds. And then Tennessee back in the top 10, jumping up five spots. We had the Volunteers at number 15. We have them now at number 10 following their win over Alabama, 24-17. Some say that Tennessee should be higher. 
uh, maybe above Iowa State, maybe above LSU. I would disagree with both of those notions right now. Uh, still need to see a lot from Tennessee. They beat Alabama. They did not look good when they beat Alabama. And if you watch our Week 8 recap video, we listed all of the self-inflicted wounds and mistakes that Alabama did to themselves. If one of those goes their way, the Crimson Tide win and not the Volunteers. They're still a quality team. They're still a good team. But to me, not worthy enough to be above Iowa State, who is unbeaten still, LSU, Clemson, guys like that. So that is our top 10 right now. A very different looking top 10. Very strange looking top 10 for some. But that's what we've got in week 9. Sure, it's going to look very different when we do this video again next Monday for week 10. Heading into the second section, we've got number 11 and number 12. Notre Dame and BYU, neither of those teams moving in our rankings, staying put after Notre Dame's win over Georgia Tech, 31-13. to BYU beating Oklahoma State, 38-35. to The exact same score as the Iowa State and UCF game with a very similar ending to that of the Iowa State and UCF game. Kind of wild that the two top teams in the Big 12 had dang near identical games and finishes uh, this last weekend. But some would say that those teams need to be in the top 10. Some say BYU definitely needs to be in the top 10. I disagree with that right now. I would not put BYU over a team like Tennessee. I would not put them over a team uh, like Iowa State or LSU right now. BYU is a fantastic team. They're uh, playing really, really good football, and there's a very good chance they make the college football playoff. But right now, still on the outside of our top 10 looking in until they get some big time, ma another, I should say, another massive win that propels them up, kind of like Tennessee had, uh, maybe like you know Georgia had, or a lot of teams ahead of them lose, and that's a very good possibility as well. Number 13, Indiana. They move up six spots for us. When you beat a team that we had ranked, we had Nebraska ranked, I think, 23rd. They're obviously out of our top 25 now. But we thought the Cornhuskers should have been a low-end top 25 team, and Indiana beat them 56-7. to So naturally, they are going to skyrocket in the rankings. And even for those people that didn't have Nebraska ranked, everybody was kind of in agreement saying, hey, this is probably Indiana's toughest test they've seen so far, their toughest opponent they've seen so far this year. Be interesting to see how they handle that at home. They handled it perfectly, 56-7 to over the Cornhuskers. Unbelievable. They did lose their star quarterback, Curtis Rowick, for an indefinite amount of time. We don't know how long that will be. Hopefully, it does not derail this team, but... I do believe that uh, a Kurt Signetti-led team can handle any type of adversity thrown their way. Indiana up to number 13. We are living in a world where the Indiana Hoosiers are ranked above the Alabama Crimson Tide in football. Hard to believe, man. Gotta love, you've got to love college football for reasons like that. Unreal. That kind of ranking. Indiana above Alabama in football. Kansas State staying put at number 14 with their win over West Virginia, 45-18. to A&M dropping a few spots because of the movement we saw from Alabama, because of the movement we saw from Indiana specifically. Uh, the Aggies did get the win. They won by 10 over Mississippi State. Didn't look all that great doing it, but a win is a win, and they've got a massive game coming up now in College Station against LSU, a game that we will be breaking down for you here in the next few days. Alabama, as we mentioned, down at number 16. Something 8 is too far of a drop. But look, the Crimson Tide have two losses now. It's hard to believe, but they do. They've got a loss on the road to Vanderbilt. They've now got a loss on the road to Tennessee. The state of Tennessee has not been kind to Alabama so far this year. They lost that game 24-17. to And here's the thing. It's a close loss, yes. But if you go look at Alabama over the last few weeks, really since the second half of that Georgia game, they've looked very, very bad. Dang near blew it against Georgia, lost to Vanderbilt, probably should have lost to South Carolina, did lose against Tennessee, even though they had every opportunity to win that game. So the Crimson Tide not playing disciplined football, not playing good football at all. The talent is there, the discipline, maybe the culture is not. Alabama down to number 16, just barely above Pittsburgh and Boise State, both of which had a bye week, but both of which have massive games this weekend as Pittsburgh takes on Syracuse on Thursday and Boise State takes on UNLV on on Friday. Number 19, Illinois up two spots into the top 20 after beating Michigan 21-7 in Champaign. They had absolutely horrendous uniforms, but who cares what you look like if you're winning? They got the job done. Brett Bielema's squad only has one loss. They should be taken seriously in the Big Ten. Big Ten's wild this year. You got you know, Oregon and Penn State and Ohio State. But then you've got teams like Illinois and Indiana playing really good football that are kind of dark horses in the conference this year. So don't sleep on the Big Ten. It's not as top-heavy as people think. There are some other teams in there that are threatening uh, across the conference. So they are in at number 19. Ole Miss dropping two because of the movement around them. Still remaining in the top 20, though, uh, coming out of their bye week. Rounding out our top 25, five more teams. SMU up a spot after a 30-point win on the road against Stanford. They jump Missouri, who narrowly survived a bad Auburn team. Yes, 
I know Brady Cook got hurt, and credit to him for going to the hospital, getting checked out, coming back, and leading the comeback. But Missouri has not been playing great football at all either. Got blown out against A&M, bounced back against UMass. That's nothing to brag about. And then narrowly beat a bad Auburn team at home in Columbia. Concerns for Missouri as they take on Alabama this Saturday. We'll be predicting that game here in the next few days. It's a big game for both as they're trying to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. Both these teams are. So interesting game in Tuscaloosa on Saturday. But Missouri down to number 22. And then rounding it out, 23, 24, 25, Army, Navy, and Vanderbilt. Those rankings are actually the exact same as what the AP poll has we didn't do it. We didn't do it because we liked what the AP poll did. That's Virginia where we had them. We, we had Army ranked last week. We had Vanderbilt ranked last week. Uh, and then we have Navy ranked there now. So who would have thought? We are in a world of college football where Indiana is ranked above Alabama. You've got Oregon now as the number one team of the country. Miami is number five. Boise State is a potential playoff team. That's not maybe a shock to some. Illinois is in the top 20, and Army, Navy, and Vanderbilt all ranked in a row. Vanderbilt ranked, I believe, what, for the first time since 2007, 2008, at least in the regular season. But the Black Knights beat ECU 45-28. So bad that ECU had to fire their coach in Mike Houston. Navy was not ranked for us last week. They jump in there now after their dominant 51-17 win over Charlotte. Just like Army, they remain unbeaten. And I think we're all hoping for an American Athletic Championship game between Army and Navy. How awesome that would be. And maybe even better if one of those teams can get in to the college football playoff. And then Vanderbilt. They didn't look good against Ball State. Wasn't a fan of their performance there, only beating them by 10. But they've got a win over Alabama. They've had a pretty solid road win on the road against Kentucky. And now they have a home game this weekend against Texas. Can Vanderbilt pull off two massive upsets in a row this year? Once over Bama, maybe again over Texas, or the Longhorns on upset alert? Find out in the next few days right here at the Gridiron Expert. We're predicting that game. But Vanderbilt and Texas will be a top 25 matchup. Nobody saw that coming back in the preseason, but it's going to be a lot of fun to watch regardless. And the Commodores, I do believe, are worthy of their top 25 spot, even if it is the last spot in our top 25. So there you have it, guys. Week 9. That's the poll right now. It'll look drastically different next week, just like it has every single week across this year. That's what makes these rankings fun. That's what makes college football the absolute best sport in the entire world. So leave your comments down below. Leave your rankings down below. Let us know what you think. Who's too high? Who's too low? Who do you have ranked and where? And let's get ready for what's going to be a massive week nine. Five ranked versus ranked matchups. Guaranteed five ranked teams to lose. There will be others that lose as well. It'll be a chaotic weekend, which will make next Monday when we do our Week 10 GE rankings that much better. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Of course, check out everything down in the description below. That includes our website, thegridironexpert.com, home, of course, of those exclusive expert picks. Picks that are beating out over 80% of the national handicappers, not just this year, but each of the last six years as well. So go sign up for those today. Win big with us today. Again, over on thegridironexpert.com. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.